Welcome to yes. LMT Infinite. And today, She-Hulk. Attorney at Law's first trailer reveals release date. Marvel fans are in for a ride for a second Attorney at Law as She-Hulk dropped its first trailer, starring Tatiana Maslany as Jennifer Walters, She-Hulk. The Disney Plus series has an impressive cast of Mark Ruffalo, Bruce Banner, Hulk, Tim Roth Abomination, Ginger Gonzaga, Renee Elise Goldsberry, and Jamila Jamal as Titania. After its poster release earlier today, the series has been named She-Hulk, Attorney at Law. The Disney Plus series will mark Marvel Studios' eighth television series which is being created by Jessica Gao, Rick and Morty, Silicon Valley, with Anu Valia, Never Have I Ever, and Cat Quaro Brooklyn Nine-Nine. It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Set to direct the six-part series, Who is She-Hulk? Created by the late Stan Lee, Jennifer Walters, She-Hulk is the cousin of Bruce Banner. After facing a freak accident, Walters needed a blood transfusion to survive. While her cousin Bruce Banner stepped up for the infusion, his gamma rays irradiated blood also granted Walters the power of the Hulk, albeit a milder version. Though Jennifer Walters can transform into She-Hulk when she gets angry, her version of the green monster is smaller in size. Additionally, she can retain most of her intelligence and speech ability in her transformed form, unlike her cousin. In later years, Walters permanently transformed into She-Hulk, retaining both superhuman strength and intelligence. Interestingly, she is also one of the few characters like Deadpool, who can break the fourth wall at times. When is She-Hulk releasing? Prior to the trailer's release, it was rumored that the Disney Plus series will be released. On August 17, 2022, the first trailer of She-Hulk has been described as funny and humorous with a lot of heart. Apart from being a superhero series, the trailer has also teased that the show will also explore Jennifer Walters' dating life as she struggles with her newfound powers and appearance. According to director Kat Quaro, the series has a lot of heart mixed with humor and fun. However, the series is still very much connected to the larger MCU, Quaro has explained. I, I never choose a project based on genre, and I actually don't think very much about genre. I think about character, and I think about, you know, the emotional lives of the characters. And, um, and you know, can I bring something, can I bring a mix of humor and heart to this? Because that is what I love to watch and it's what I love to work with. And so when I stepped into, you know, the Marvel playground, the cool thing about Marvel is that, you know, it is an ever evolving um, universe and you have straight dramas and you have, you know, very comedic films. And we are in that world where we're definitely playing, um, you know, with a, with a more comedic world. But it also is still part of, you know, of Marvel land. Actor Tim Roth, who plays the role of Abomination in the series has been all praises regarding the series. While the MCU has been rapidly exploring the multiverse and the cosmos, She-Hulk is a fresh breath of air with its grounded approach to dealing with regular life. Moreover, with a second attorney at law, fans should rejoice for some exciting cameos from the series. And, today we analyze Doctor Strange's third eye. Are you pumped for Doctor Strange? What do you hope to see? Tell us in the comments. Doctor Strange's third eye explained. What causes a third eye to appear on Doctor Strange's forehead? Is it a useful tool or a really bad sign? Keep watching for what the comics can tell us about what it all means. Warning. Spoilers for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness are ahead. Corrupted Strange. Before the climactic final battle in Multiverse of Madness, Earth 616, Steven becomes stranded in a universe that's collapsing in on itself. A variant Strange is isolated in a sanctum tower with the Darkhold, a book full of evil spells. At first, our Strange doesn't realize that this Strange has gone to the dark side. He and Christine Palmer initially planned to ask for help defeating Wanda Maximoff, but then Sinister Strange grasps the Darkhold, and a third eye appears on his forehead. Th Things just got out of hand. Steven learns that the Darkhold corrupted his alternate self to the point that he became obsessed with finding a reality in which he ended up with Christine. That reality doesn't exist anywhere in the multiverse, however. And Sinister Strange confesses that in his failed quest, he killed numerous other Strange variants. They battle, and 616 Strange eventually wins out. 616 Strange After America Chavez defeats Scarlet Witch by showing her the futility of her plan, 
The film ends with Strange calmly attempting to cross an intersection, only to be suddenly forced to his knees by what seems to be intense pain. A moment later, a hideous third eye manifests on his face. The movie cuts to the credits as Strange screams in horror. The eye then briefly comes back in a mid credit scene in which Klee, a powerful sorceress who has been romantically entangled with Doctor Strange in the comics, makes her MCU debut. She tells him that an incursion is destroying another universe and that they must fix it. The eye appears again as Klee opens a portal and guides Strange through it. We don't know for sure how much time has passed in between the end of the movie and the mid credits stinger, but clearly Strange grew accustomed to that third eye fairly quickly. The Dark Holds Toll When Doctor Strange faces the Illuminati, they explain that accessing the Dark Holds power comes at a great cost. That's true even if the user has good intentions, as their Strange did when he used it to defeat Thanos. The corrupted Strange later reinforces this idea, since it appears on Steven's face only after he's used the Dark Hold himself. The third eye could very well be the price he paid. After all, no one is immune to the corrosive effects of the Dark Hold's magic. Wanda, too, has clearly been affected by the Dark Hold, but she doesn't have a third eye on her forehead. This might be because she was its intended user or because she's a Nexus being. Did you know there's an entire chapter devoted to you in the Dark Hold? That's the Book of the Damned. Or perhaps the third eye popping up is something specific to Doctor Strange's use of the Dark Hold, considering his connection to another key magical item, the Eye of Agamotto. Along with the effects of the Dark Hold, the eye may be related to the amulet Strange wears around his neck. That magical relic is called the Eye of Agamotto and it was introduced in the first Doctor Strange film. Wise choice. You'll wear the Eye of Akimoto once you've mastered its powers. It used to house the Time Stone, which gave Strange the ability to manipulate time and see various future probabilities. Thanos destroyed the stone, but Doctor Strange has refurbished the Eye of Agamotto itself. There's just no green gem inside anymore, but the amulet is plenty powerful on its own. In comics, it's named after Agamotto, one of the members of the Vishanti and the very first Sorcerer Supreme. It's Wong, not Strange, who currently holds that title in the MCU, but important relics have chosen a non-Supreme Strange, before based on his talent for mysticism and his readiness to take on tough foes. In this instance, his old magical item may have imbued him with new powers. After his encounter with the Dark Hold, a bodily manifestation of the Eye of Agamotto could mean Doctor Strange is ready to take on even more dangerous adversaries in the future. A force for good. Along with the Cloak of Levitation, the Eye of Agamotto is one of Doctor Strange's most trusted accessories in the comics. And yes, it sometimes produces an actual third eye on the sorcerer's forehead. It was introduced in the same issue as Strange himself. 1963 Strange Tales No. 110 the amulet's design is loosely based on the all-seeing eye of Buddha, a Nepalese symbol. In comics, the third eye isn't necessarily anything for Doctor Strange to be worried about. It's sometimes referred to as the eye of truth, and it often manifests more like a blinding light than an actual eyeball. In fact, in comics, it's not the heavy toll the corrupted Strange describes. It's pure light wards off evil and lets Strange into the minds of others to read their true intentions. It can also break illusions reveal disguises, and even control time and space. What it could mean The Eye of Agamotto's usefulness and Doctor Strange's stature among the current Avengers indicates that the MCU could be headed in some exciting directions. After the events of Loki and that mid credit stinger, time traveling and portal jumping abilities could certainly be valuable. But what might really be handy are the Eye's powers of clarity and revelation. The New Secret Invasion series with Nick Fury and the shape-shifting alien scrolls, is in the works at Disney+. Plus. The all-seeing eye would be a game-changer for deducing the identity of scrolls should they turn against our heroes. Likewise, a version of Kang the Conqueror showed up in the finale of Loki and one will return in Ant-Man and the Wasp. Quantumania. I'm older than I look. This game is for... the young. Given Kang's prominence in the comics, it's exceedingly likely we'll continue to see him in movies and TV series. Perhaps as the MCU's new big bad, Kang can travel across timelines in the multiverse, change his appearance, and exist as multiple versions of himself at once. Plus, fans have been anticipating that a Kang-focused take on the comic's Secret Wars storyline will eventually make its way to the big screen.
If that third eye really is an expression of the eye of Agamotto, it could be the secret weapon our heroes need to get them through to phase 5. Stop! Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from LMT Infinite Channel. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.